let us get on to this because today what is happening is the the uh, freshman students the first year be students normally they used to lose one full year in understanding again what has been learned in 10 plus 2 that is physics chemistry mathematics and other aspects and then their last year is going to be you know focused on their placement activities and thereby uh, the learning used to get affected but now it's really good thing that is happening around us that the first year we are really making students to understand the engineering aspects and allow them to you know flare, taste the flair of engineering from day one so that is a great thing it's happening it's really a welcoming sign and coming back to this particular course innovation and uh, design thinking wherein today we would be discussing on the first module uh, but before that i would like to really set the context for this overall discussion i would like to call this a discussion because at many point of time you know in many stages we need need to really take a pause and uh, discuss on certain aspects and then understand how this course is going to be you know taken to the students uh, because what is happening is there are certain forces you know working around us uh, are really responsible for this changes to happen so if you look at that particular thing uh, the, the forces uh, which are revolving around us are really uh, responsible for these changes to happen. Those the forces when we uh, really look at it, uh, the responsible for the change is one is the customer demand. You can, you can consider uh, customer or the stakeholders who, who are really coming out with their new requirements and new uh, demands which are really you know making us to think beyond our capacity and the technological changes is one more factor and economic moments yes competition is huge social trends are getting changed organizational aspirations are also getting uh, really i would say the enhanced so these forces are really uh, you know responsible for making us to look for the change but when this change is really expected you know we should really respond to the, those changes that's when uh, jack will you know says uh, here very um, meaningfully that when the rate of change in the marketplace exceeds the rate of change in individuals the end is in sight. It's a very apt uh, statement made by Jack that you know we need to get prepared for the change, and that's what we are doing today. You know, discussing on uh, the very important uh, aspects of the new course being introduced. Then uh, let us challenge uh, this change. Okay, how exactly we should do that? To get on to this, uh, the main discussion frame framework, uh, we need to answer few questions to ourselves because see now one important aspect when it comes to this particular course is that we are now discussing here how we should really take it to the students then let us keep uh, back of our mind that the students are going to be our you know audience for whom you are we are now getting prepared so if that is the case let us start with uh, the few uh, you know questions huh for which we should really uh, try to get the answer uh, because we, we are uh, just to uh, start our discussion like we design buildings we design products yes that is a continuous process wherein many times you know we get into designing many of the products uh, we use but have we ever thought of designing ourselves the question here is have we ever thought of designing ourselves so this is a very valid uh, question which we need to answer most of the times we do not you know really invest time on designing ourselves why this is essential from point of view of this particular you know, course because this course is going to be an open-ended course here 
students need to understand their strengths weaknesses and then build those competencies to deal with the uh, knowledge uh, you know building the knowledge bank okay so in doing so it is quite apt for them to understand that they need to start their designing process by designing themselves that means they should make them eligible to take up such new knowledge elements which would go into their knowledge passbook i am using the word knowledge passbook here because uh, how we have our you know passbook for the bank where the financial transactions are taking place so here it is quite essential for us to create our own knowledge passbook right wherein students will be you know getting uh, credited the knowledge elements what they take so it is quite uh, apt for them to start their journey with the process of designing themselves so if that is the case there are certain concepts which we need to understand if they are now prepared to design uh, start their design process for their individual level right sorry uh, i think the screen is gone one second yes okay so you are able to see my screen uh, processor it's it's visible hello somebody can tell me screen is visible sir yeah okay fine see now so once the students are uh, you know ready with this process we need to understand two, two, two things the uh, individual can be a default individual or it can he can be a designer see when i say default individuals they are the people who would go with the mass the design individuals are one who are going to learn on continuous basis correct so which is now required for our course delivery we need to put them in the right side of this slide that is the right side of the table that is you know design individuals we should really make them continuous learners that means the challenge here is we need to really create the kind of mindset for the students to accept this new initiative they are coming out with coming with the, the uh, open mind but it is essential for us to create that kind of a mindset for them to you know take the knowledge delivery that is happening through this particular you know course so let us try to look into this uh, you know categorization so if i am into default individuals what will happen if i am into you know design individual what would be the change see if i am into default then i will never have any future perspective so i would be working on my past i would never try to design my future and i will never be look for the the kind of a, a feedback from the recipients but if we are to design uh, uh, individual uh, place so i'll have my own purpose i'll know my vision and i i'll design my services i'll monitor the effectiveness of this so why this is essential why we are discussing on something and how it is really connected to the uh, understanding of this course i'll tell you see now the, the students who would normally come for the uh, engineering profession would fall into two categories one is the students who are joining this profession by chance and few students are by choice see the students who are joining by choice will partially into design individual mode they are looking for bright career they have certain things in mind certain students few students are really very serious about their career their profession right but those who land up by chance are the people who should really you know be taken care of and we need to really spend quality time on shifting them from default zone to design zone then what would happen if we really look at it in other other form the de default individuals are like the vehicle with four wheels 
of different size. That means they do not have any time for planning. They jump into action and they spend time in only firefighting and then they complete the task. So it is like the vehicle having four wheels of different size. But whereas the design individuals are the one who can you know, really have a comfortable journey in planning their activities, implementing it, look for the correction to be made and then take the corrective measures on the performance they have and then go further. And this is how uh, the, the balance is to be made. So the, 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 the important thing, what we need to consider before getting onto our main discussion topic is to uh, uh, create this base for the students and understand that we have a really a challenging task in front of us to make students to you know, really make them you know, designed individuals. Let them start the journey with this mindset that I need to really build my profile. So, so I need to really understand what has been given to us and then start our journey. So with this, the basic understanding, let us come to the course objectives. When I really you know, looked at the course objectives set with the syllabus being shared, it, it goes like this, right? So it says to explain the concept of design thinking for product and service development, to explain the fundamental concepts of innovation and design thinking, to discuss the methods of implementing design thinking in the real world. Uh, that's fine, but I thought of redefining it for the sake of uh, better understanding. I, I would like to put them in this form, wherein the first thing is to build students' capacity to use problem-solving skills. See, the, the, the terminologies which have been used, I request all of you to kindly look into the terms being used here and then the little highlighted uh, words which are really needs our attention. See, first of all, it is like building students' capacity to what? To use the problem-solving skills for what? For addressing the unmet needs. Here, the unmet needs are the, the, the opportunities available uh, around us, right? So as a as a engineer, their basic role is to for, solve the problems of society. So that is what we are preparing them for. And if they are able to address the unmet needs of the place or the surrounding in which they live, you know, and use their problem solving skills in addressing them, actually they need some tool, some approach, some principles to implement or adopt. And here we are using design thinking principles to address this. So the first course objective would be to build students capacity. On what? To use problem solving skills in addressing the social challenges or the problems you know, around us, the challenges around them using design thinking principles. Second, to move on, we need to construct their mindset. If we want to build that capacity to use the problem solving skills, naturally they have to make their mind to accept it. Accept it as an engineer or a budding engineer, I need to really develop that capacity. So in building or constructing the mindset, I need to ignite the curiosity. Ultimately, all this what we are discussing is standing on two things. One is the power of curiosity, another one is the empathy. See, power of curiosity is who is going to help the students to or anybody look at the things that are happening around us and then ask why. Hundred times I should really ask why, why, why this is happening, why this is happening, why people do like this, why you know really they behave like this. So these things we really, really get add on to get a lot of opportunities. So the basis or everything stands on two things. One is the curiosity, and the other side of the, the empathy. So and then the, continuing our discussion, the third course objective can be, or the, the broader this thing would be, transform students' perspective. 
Then see, they have to look for the world around them uh, by enabling them to identify areas ripen for innovation. Correct. So they should really develop these skill sets in order to look at the society or to look at the place where they are into, you know, to, to uh, identify the areas ripe for innovation. So let us again relook. Let us take a pause for one minute. I would like everybody to look at it and understand the basic objectives of this particular, you know, discussion. And then let us continue. Okay, so let us uh, continue our discussion. So ultimately, if these objectives are to be met, and that is possible only when make this entire course an open-ended course and allow the students to work on the small projects, field projects, and realize these entire stages and in totality. So that is quite essential and this makes this complete slide gives us the picture of this particular course, how it can really taken to the students. And along with this, when we, we uh, understand the, the objectives, here certain things get activated. There are basic challenges which we cannot forget. The, the, the first challenge is we are teaching this course to the first year students. As I said, Students are coming out with a different demographic. Some are urban, some are English medium, some are Kannada medium, and uh, some are I said like by choice, by chance. So, so th this is the, the basic design when we really uh, prepare as far as the delivery is concerned. We have to keep back of our mind that we are teaching this course to the first year. Second is these students are quite new to these technologies what we are using. It is not that simple to make them to understand what is design thinking, what is you know, really innovation, what is the uh, prototypes, all that. And it is there is really a new, you know, there are all new technologies and concepts for them. So carefully, we need to really take them and pull them into uh, the, the circle of you know, influence. Most important is that what we teach today should form a strong foundation for their further learning engagement. This is a very, very important point to discuss on. See, what we are going to really do today should make them to apply it and, and learn the further, you know, learning should become so comfortable for them that it should just form a strong foundation for their further learning. So that means we must sow the seed of the designing and develop a designer mindset in them. That is what exactly should happen at the end. And we need to provide experiential learning. And there is one more important challenge. What we have here today is that we must keep the student all the time engaged. So this is unlike the other courses wherein supposing I, I have a discontinuity in between, it is okay. But the, the, the course like uh, design thinking and innovation, we cannot left them without engagement. We should keep a person, a student engaged all the time. So these are the few challenges which, which we really work on. So uh, uh, now, to, to, to start the journey, to create that the base for the students to learn, I would like to take you through to, to, in fact, two stories. One story, which goes like this. Uh, one day, an engineer was working on one crucial uh, engine of a vehicle. And uh, he was sitting and then, you know, repairing that engine removing all the parts of it and then he saw 
a heart surgeon passing by. And uh, since long, there was some, some things bothering him in that when I work with an engine and then I repair it, I take care of so much and then uh, what I paid is less and what a surgeon normally uh, does a similar work uh, gets more paid heavily. So he had that curiosity in his mind. He thought I should ask the doctor and then get it clarified. So he, he called the doctor, invited him and then asked, uh, doctor, uh, I have a small doubt in my mind. Look at this engine. I opened its heart, took the walls out, repaired them, put them back. More or less both of us are going to put the same work. But why do I get uh, uh, so much of small you know, compensation paid for my work and you get huge sums. And the doctor really uh, smiled at him and then said, uh, uh, and try the same when the engine is running. Okay. So this is one part of the discussion. So engineer again smiled back at the doctor and said, Doctor, I can pick up any dead engine and make it alive. Can you do that? So that is what is the power of an engineer. So we must really make students to feel proud for having this profession chosen for their career. Right. So they should really feel proud that yes, I am an engineer and this is the difference I'm going to bring it to the society. This is how I'm important to the society. So that is the feeling the student should get. And I would feel that this story can really make them feel that, yes, it is possible for us to bring the difference to the place where we stay, bring difference to the society where we live. Okay, so there is one more you know, story to share here because once I feel proud about the profession I've chosen and the second part is I should be in the right place with the right mindset. You know, the parachute uh, will work only when it is open. Similarly, the minds of the students should get open to the new things. Okay, then only the learning becomes you know journey. Learning becomes a you know, really, uh, what I say, the uh, happy moments. So with all that happiness, they really learn. Otherwise, it, it becomes a curse and then you would not be able to enjoy the process of learning. So there is one more a simple story, which goes like this. It's a conversation between a, a mother camel and a baby camel. So mother camel was standing, listening to the it's a baby and then uh, baby is asking, Mother, may I ask you some questions? So, mother said, Yes, sure, my son, uh, what is bothering you? So, the uh, baby asked, Why do camels have humps? Quite relevant question. So, the mother gave a very neat explanation, saying that, Well, son, we are desert animals, we need the humps to store water and we are known to survive without water when we are on desert. Okay, I have one more question. So then why are our legs long and our feet rounded? Sun, obviously they are meant for walking in the desert better than anyone else, anyone does, okay. So curiosity of the baby camel is increasing and it again asks, okay, then why are our eyelashes long? Sometimes it bothers my sight. The mother with a lot of patience, it is answering the questions being asked. My son, those long thick eyelashes are your protective layer cover. They help to protect your eyes from the desert sand and wind. So nice. So now, consolidation. I see. So the hump is to store water. When we are in desert, the legs are for walking through the desert. And these eyelashes protect my eyes from the desert sign. Yes. That's one more last question, it said. 
Yes, dear. See, this exactly many a times would happen with the students before taking up the new initiatives that their mind is not properly set. They, they, they need to be oriented properly and the contest is built. The, the, the platform should be built for them, explaining what is the importance of engineering, what this engineering is all about. Engineering and society and engineers and society. The basic concept should be made you know, clear for them before they get onto this journey. Otherwise, they would feel something like this. Why the hell we are doing in this Jew? So this is the, the basic uh, understanding with which we can really start our journey. So with, with the, 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 the basic understanding, let us begin our discussion. With the uh, today in this uh, entire uh, presentation, uh, uh, we will be discussing on uh, the certain elements. One is we are going to discuss about the basic essence of design. Then we will move on to the innovation part. Then we are going to discuss about uh, the uh, design thinking, the process of design thinking. And then we, we will end up with the prototype and the MAB part. So let us start with the essence of design. Steve Job has very nicely said that design is all about how it works it is not just what it looks and feels like right ultimately it should work right so what is essential how, how this you know this definition makes a, uh, sense to us is like uh, everything what we see around us are user centrically designed products and services just imagine just imagine how the, the uh, user requirements are captured uh, today? The, the manufacturers, the service providers are, you know, accompanying us like our shadow, right? They would be monitoring our behavior. They would be monitoring the way how we react to the changing needs and how we really feel bad at certain point of time. And then they capture using the technology and then provide us what we want. Like a magic, it is like uh, Allah Uddin Chirag. You just uh, look for uh, the requirements and it is made available to you. See, let's say for example, say uh, if you are looking for some, some, some best uh, you know, pair of trousers on, on the Facebook, you just, uh, sorry, the Google, you just click and then try to search. And the very next moment, in your Facebook account, you start getting lot hundreds of you know, advertisements connecting to that particular you know, product what you are looking for. And that's how exactly the, the, the requirements of the consumers are captured. Right. It may be even uh, connected with some, some uh, tablets or medicines or certain elements. What I'm really looking for, those would be made available to us uh, within no time. That's a power of now. I said no curiosity and the empathy that is working. So then, then, then we must go in for design. Then why we should design really? Right. We must design because we are not perfect. See how nicely said. It said that continuous improvement is essential. Changes are essential. Nobody is perfect on this earth. So we keep on generating lot of requirements right and those requirements are to be met by proper design process right so it is said and in, in, in some other form it is said that you know uh, we have to design because we want to survive that means it becomes a basic necessity of the system that we should continuously design correct so that's how it is said, and uh, John uh, Christopher at least you know said uh, very nicely that more than thirty years later, you know, in a changed world, I am no longer happy with man things. Okay, 
That means that your temperament is essential. I need to design the things which are required, which are meeting the needs of the you know consumer. So then, then who are these designers? Designers are the change agents in the society. Their goal is to improve the human condition in all its aspects through physical change. Right. Let us try to understand it in a different form. See, thoughts and actions intended to change thoughts and actions. What is that? See, it is designers' thoughts and actions. What for? To bring in the change in what? In user thoughts and actions. This is exactly the basic understanding of design. What, what I'm trying to do here is, I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of the user and capture their requirements. See, empathy is something which is really so powerful that you are able to understand the pain points of the sufferer and then put them back in the form of the co-created solutions. I am using the word co-created. Actually, what will happen initially, I am going to co-generate their problems and at the end, I am going to give co-created solutions. What is the meaning of it? See now, when I say co-generated, it is by placing myself in the shoes of the user understanding their pain points and then providing them the required solution in a co-created manner. So I need to create that ambience wherein the user would accept the solution which is provided. Okay, then what is the design is all about? Design is bringing change. So what change it will happen? When I say change, change is difference. See how nicely it has been put by uh, Harold Nelson that change is difference. What is the difference? Difference between what we had and what we are getting. Right. This difference So that is how exactly the entire process is to be understood. See, if I try to take it uh, with an example, say for, for, for example, you are trying to work on the, the patient, uh, you know, experience who is there on the bed for a long period. And just try to understand, let, let us try to understand this with an example. So a person who is there on the bed for a long period, there is every chance that he may develop bed sores, right? What is essential here to just to protect him from the, the bed sores is to change the uh, bed sheet frequently. But is it uh, practically possible? Is it possible for a, a attender to monitor it so closely that he can or she can change the bed sheet, which would be difficult? Okay, this is one very critical you know, experiment wherein uh, in fact the one the team of students uh, did it wherein they developed a small gadget right and uh, the, the gadget has got a sensor which is connected to the, the uh, you know let's see it which would measure the moisture content it is with a small very low voltage and then it doesn't affect the person who is really sleeping on that so when, when that is connected to the bed sheet, the moisture content is measured. And once the moisture content level goes beyond certain level of acceptance, it will give a bib. And actually the attender can come and change the bed sheet. Right? So this is how exactly we need to understand this. Design is change. I'm trying to bring the change by understanding what 
the pain points of the sufferer. So if I place myself in the shoes of the sufferer, then I can really see, understand the uh, pain points and accordingly follow this process. I need to follow this process. So then, then is it the role of somebody, you know, only a few of the people who can really do it? That means all the people who are there as, you know, part of this course uh, cannot do it. Is it uh, limited only to the few of the people who develop this skill set? No, that is not the case. Everyone is a designer. Everyone has got the ability to design. Correct. I have made a few uh, things here. See, it, it, we, I might have you know, developed a new recipe. That's a design. Correct. I might have changed the layout of my uh, drawing room. Right. Or the living room. That's also in a small way the design. Or I might have, you know, designed a tour for my family. So when I initially said PDCA, that's plan, do, check and act is very much applicable here. I'm going to plan, I'm going to implement. So in a smaller way, in a, in a, in a very small way, I'm, I'm a designer. So design, so design thinking is something inherent within the human cognition. So it is a key part of what makes us human. We are all designers. So there is nothing that I do not have this capacity. It is only required is to set my mind towards this, build that required mindset and develop the curiosity to look at the things, what is happening around me and then act accordingly. So what kind of problems I, I can really tackle? This is very important because before I take students through what is design thinking and how it is really helping us to solve the problems because we are, we are using the, the term innovation here innovation is something which really brings in change right so how do i use what kind of problems i really able to tackle through design thinking for innovation in fact the the, the course title would have been design thinking for innovation or it's innovation and design thinking is fine so, so what kind of problems can can we look at this slide can we look at this slide so they are not uh, quite uh, the usual one usually in the sense when i say product development is something normally what we had in our mind is product means something which is tangible if i am using a design design word the moment i listen or hear the word design my mind would look for something tangible at the end no it is not necessary all the time that i am going to get the tangible product at the end i may have a well defined system developer I may have a well-defined process being designed to overcome the social challenge or the design challenge, or I may have a tangible product. So the kind of problems I'm going to tackle when I'm using a design thinking approach is something like this. I have, I have a list of things that have been taken, actually live cases been taken from some of the organizations who were involved or using intensively the design thinking principle to solve their you know problems so here make airport waiting time more pleasant it is actually developed for a sen uh, senior uh, citizens who would find it so difficult the moment it is announced in the airport that uh, the flight is you know really rescheduled at three o'clock from 12 p.m., the three hours gap, what they should do? They, they, they really become restless. So how we can really improve hmm, or make their stay comfortable when they are waiting waiting for the, the, their flight to arrive? Okay, so improve traffic congestion. So this is again the problem which was been dealt for the people who are in emergency there, there may be it's uh, for the ambulance you you know it's, uh, even though we it's a rule says that we should make space for the the uh, ambulance to travel but in uh, cities like uh, bangalore uh, chennai mumbai and all other places it would be difficult when the traffic congestion takes place so how we can improve this 
see the list goes like this so how to design a good kitchen how to give you know better experience shopping for sunglasses for visually impaired people right and uh, improve the patient experience right this is one thing i would like to share here uh, stanford uh, healthcare design thinking to improve patient experience here see that there's uh, one more uh, classic uh, example wherein the people who are in, in the hospital for longer duration or stay for longer days so they would lose their smile on their face so can we do something for them can we bring back their, their smile on their face because already they have certain pain in their body so if this is really clubbed with their emotional disturbance mental disturbance then it would you know uh, in fact uh, increase the play pain rather than reducing it so how can we bring that smile back on the face of the patients you believe it or not the students team in fact went into the shoes of the patients by by spending their time in the hospital and requesting the authority to allocate them a room wherein they literally slept on the bed for a few days to understand or experience the pain points of the patients they interacted with the patient they interacted with the doctors nurses all the stakeholders to, to capture their insights empathetically they arrived at a model and they redesigned the entire room to create that kind of the experience and they were successful in bringing back the smile on the face of the patients this is what is the power of design thinking so our students are lucky to uh, learn this course in the first year but the challenge here is for the faculty team to get prepared for this delivery to get prepared for this delivery it's not easy because last uh, 10 years almost 11 years i'm i'm into this uh, uh, you know teaching students the first year students the social innovation uh, which is uh, you believe it or not every year even though the, the delivery looks the same we have our own challenges in making students to accept this and get into it we need to really struggle hard uh, as a faculty because it's an open-ended course wherein i need to act like a facilitator and create that ecosystem for them to take up this journey so these are a set of you know uh, problems just i thought we can really look into it what kind of problems this particular you know intervention can help us to solve okay so then, then designing is one thing so all are designers so designer mindset is to look at the things where possible bring in the change develop it as a process then, then what is innovation in that case so in innovation is the process of creating value by applying novel solutions to meaningful problems so nicely said why it is a meaningful problems because see, innovation can happen when you touch upon the actual requirements of the user it is not that i feel right and i do it it is the people need i said no co generated problems so so i need to keep the user at the center and then you know capture so when that is done the innovation will be meaningful i'm going to it's a create value by applying novel solutions to meaningful problems the, 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 the diagram what is here and clearly so shows that at the initial level when i start my you know uh, tackling the problem it is so you know filled with lot of uncertainties and there are certain pattern existing which i need to de, de uh, you know uh, bottleneck or uh, layer unlayer them or take the layer one by one and understand that, that uh, the possibilities and develop the concept and then look for the solution so that's how the innovation happens so if i understand this particular innovation in a, in a, in a, in a possible way how this uh, design thinking experts would look at it is called the uh, double diamond helix uh, concept wherein the uh, left side uh, 
the place is the problem area and the right side one is the solution area so that means when i look at the uh, problems let us try to understand how very beautifully uh, developed the concept is this so what would happen is in two time and uh, uh, design the concept basic concept is that i would start my journey to understand the problems and I, I i would keep my antenna open i would go in a very unbiased manner i would go uh, with a open mind open mind wherein i look for the things that are happening the way they are happening i will never add my understanding to that it's like it's like a, a, if you just go back to your childhood days and maybe you discuss with your parents and then ask how i used to b at the age of uh, four or six they would say you used, used to be very talkative and asking lot of questions that is the thing today what we are doing we are trying to mask ourselves with the artificial thing and then we have stopped asking questions we we are we are good at jumping to conclusions we are you know good at you know assuming so many things and saying that and, and uh, this will not work that's why i said the first slide what i showed is design individuals and default individuals this is the place where that is quite relevant if i am a default individual my observation with my surroundings would be you know blocked one i would never keep my mind open to the new opportunities that are happening around me i would definitely go with a blocked mind that will not help i need to be you know divergent i need to be divergent in in collecting all the possible problems and then consolidate them analyze them and then take a convergent uh, dive and then arrive at the best meaningful problem to work on meaningful code generated design challenge to work on right so that is the first part of it and the second part when i have my you know, uh, well defined uh, design challenge then i have to again take a bigger dive to look for possible solutions correct for every problem there are multiple solutions available today there are number of tools available under the banner of design thinking to to develop the solutions and then come out with a meaningful what the very unique solution which would really address the basic requirements of the user that is the innovation framework so again if you look at uh, the right side of uh, thing where in two circles see one side is a designer and the other side is a user the intersection is the empathy so designer need to empathetically understand the user needs and then that will happen through a very powerful curiosity which will work towards identifying the problem this is the basic uh, understanding of this innovation framework yeah, maybe we can we can take it in some uh, one more form in which we can understand how this innovation framework innovation model would work so this is whenever whenever i look at certain uh, challenges so it has to be seen from three angles one is the desirability angle one more is the feasibility and third one is the viability this if these are taken care in a balanced mode then the innovation innovation here is the best possible solution to address that challenge would be arrived at so here when i say desirability what is the desirability desirability nothing but it is what the stakeholders want it so when i say stakeholders it is the people who are really in need of the solution right and they are the one who are waiting for somebody to capture it because see many times what will happen actually i am so much gone deep into those sufferings even though i know that 
the solution is within me i'll not be able to get out of it i'll not be able to solve my problems so if as a designer if i am able to capture those pain points and then make it a co generated statement right and then i look it from the feasibility angle that means can we do it yes if we can do it can we sustain it correct so if we can sustain it if we can do it and this is what exactly the stakeholders need then our work is done and this is what exactly we need to orient the students about the uh, role or the uh, the objective or the focus of this particular course is what we want them to understand the importance of these three elements desirability feasibility and viability so viability is nothing but the economic aspects right feasibility is can we do it is it possible to do it and desirability is something which is what the society the customer or the user wants it so that is the exactly the, the basic model with which the entire journey of the sport would be taking place okay this innovation actually starts with empathy because unless and until i place myself in the shoes of the sufferer i will not be able to understand this empathy so see see how exactly this works i I'll, i'll tell you uh, nowadays at least the people who are really working on uh, certain products and services and they design it they really uh, try to place themselves in the shoes of the sufferer and then try to create that ambience for them try to create that ambience for them so some of the innovations i can list down so innovations can be from any area it is innovations can be from the product side it can be from the products which have a social uh, connect right i have some of the examples to discuss on say for example now the, the all the scooters or the two wheelers who are now most of the vehicles they are provided with the charger it's the best example for innovation understanding the pain points of the people right see we, even though the rule says that uh, while driving you don't speak but there would be emergencies sometimes so they have come out with the bluetooth connected uh, the mic available with their helmets so they wear the helmet and can have the hands free talk while driving so that is also innovation correct how to overcome the risk of wearing it the, the, we can really uh, have a debate on that but these are all the very special uh, uh, innovation have happened uh, as of now to make our life comfortable the wrist watches the very uh, what i say the modern uh, the uh, watches which are developed like apple and other companies which would be monitoring my health condition so i can set it to my heartbeat or the bp level at certain standard uh, readings and the moment if it uh, crosses it really gives me alarm so that is all is the best innovation what we can really look at it so that is how uh, our life is becoming simple so if i look at how this uh, you know empathy would work see empathy can be classified uh, as per the psychologist says it can be cognitive it can be emotional it can be compassionate so what kind of empathy we expect the students or the, the, the designer should look at it so cognitive empathy is the uh, what i can say short term wherein during a negotiation there there is a meeting or a online it's meeting it's 3 o'clock we, we will be trying to understand the pain points of the other person which would uh, may get disconnected the moment we move out of that particular scene so the other one is the emotional empathy which which uh, would be you know uh, uh, work when we are you know trying to be with the other person where the interpersonal the relationships like career counseling or it can be um, mentoring uh, sessions 
wherein we can really understand the, the, the empathetically the, the problems and then work. I can I can really uh, give an example, uh, very good example of our own student uh, who where emotional empathy did work during her placement session and she got placed with Amazon uh, company for 20 lakhs. I'll tell you how it was. She was giving her interview and she is basically from uh, electronics and communication background and the uh, discussions were on the Amazon uh, software division wherein they were asking more on the programming part. She was a little uncomfortable in answering certain questions and then uh, at one stage she has lost the hope of you know really um, the job getting job so that is the time when the HR manager emotional empathy I'm telling you know he was finding that she is capable but she is not able to really connect to, to the requirements so she gave her one more chance by asking do you have anything else to share this was the wonderful you know very uh, encouraging supporting question asked whereas the HR manager could have closed saying that you know I I uh, done with the interview I answered uh, answers out of 10 questions being asked he did not do that he just said do you have something else to share he made her mind open and she said uh, yes uh, I think the first year I had done one course uh, sorry one project uh, which had uh, done on this fact that, that, that her team had worked on the salu plates the plates made out of uh, salus and they had developed a really uh, encouraging uh, framework for one of the village so she just narrated I said, good 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 what you have done in that can you just explain me and she got extra uh, you know energy to explain about that project what the, the her team had taken up and uh, he said huh, this is a kind of you know mindset we want this is the way how we should really want our people to come so, so at the end of the journey he said yes you are recruited you are selected see this is what i say the power of uh, empathy power of uh, which would really work but what we want our students to do they here we want the students to go for the next level that is compassionate empathy. this is the empathy wherein, wherein you have to consider the system see that's the way because when i'm trying to use the columns what i feel on a day-to-day -day basis or the design challenges i take up it is not that in isolation i give solution I need to keep a system thinking in my mind and try to arrive at all the possible gaps which I would be able to fill through the solution what I'm providing. So the compassionate empathy is something which our students need to really develop. But can I understand this in, 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 in some other better way? Like maybe my uh, mechanical faculty may be able to um, give or understand this in a better way when we draw in fact or all of us have gone through our first year of engineering wherein we used to draw front view you know side view all that so this is what exactly is trying to give or giving a, you know giving us an, an opportunity to understand what empathy would be see all the three things what is shown here two of the images are two images and one is the actual truth wherein I am able to see the object. This is what exactly is required when I am trying to understand the problems of the other person. So if I look at, see it from one angle, I may be getting the true image, right? But I may be missing the actual truth, correct? Through empathy, with an unbiased mind, with a proper mindset, I will be able to really understand the truth behind the pains correct why and how when where the problems are really occurring see some of the innovations what we can really discuss on which have got the social relevance and where our students should really focus on 
See, this is one of the live straw, which is used in Uganda, where they, they hardly they get a, a, a good quality of water to drink. So this is a straw developer, which has got a filter in, inside it. When uh, they, they just suck the water through this filter, the water gets filtered and they get a good quality water to drink. See how nicely it has been uh, empathetically designed. I would like to take you back to this particular three circles and maybe discuss. See now innovation has happened. So innovation by understanding the pain points of the people. So the, the, the product which is developed is required by the stakeholders. And is it possible to do it? Yes, we can do it. And is it viable? Yes, cost wise also it is quite viable. So if it is it is not that it is possible and then it will cost me huge, then that that would never become a viable uh, product. Correct? See, for example, for example, the similar one, if you want to discuss uh, another side of it, like a nano uh, car. Nano car was in fact designed for the common man wherein it would be made available at 50,000 rupees. That was the initial target or maybe 70,000 rupees. So what uh, Ratan Tata wanted is that every common man should be able to have a four wheeler. But it failed for so many reasons. So maybe in my opinion, one of these circles were not taken in a balanced mode. Correct. Somewhere it got disturbed and then the one of the element really gone out of the control. So that's how the uh, the car did not catch up the market. So the second one is a Q drum. See, see, in many of the remote areas, still it's a struggle for the people to get the drinking water, water for drinking on daily basis. So they have to travel a long way to go to the place where the water is available. They have to fetch it and then get it. So this is a Q drum which is in the form of a toy which these children can just pull it like a toy wherein the drum is filled with water so it is easy to carry empathetically you know connected right quite feasible to do it and also viable so this is one more best example this is the classic example i would always love to share this see the actually, this tiny, you know, uh, infant incubator, right, which was designed by a set of uh, engineering students uh, for uh, the newly born baby uh, who would otherwise find it so difficult to survive because of the non availability of these incubators. And at the same time, the cost is so huge that it used to be $25,000. US dollars and it is available with few of the hospitals which is out of reach by many of the families who would, who are staying away uh, in the remote places. So they develop a small infant incubator which is costing now only 25 US dollars and very easy to handle and it has really become a reason for the survival of the many of millions of kids. This is, I would always love to share as a classic example of a design thinking, empathetically understanding the requirements, technically making it technologically, technically feasible, and also commercially viable. So all the three elements, whether we are dealing with the social challenges or whether it is non-social challenges, all the three circles are paramount important for us to really come out with the solution. So if this is true, then we are coming to the actual part of it. What is design thinking in that case? Design thinking is a method, it's an approach, it's a principle, it's a tool. It's not a magic. It's not a magic. It's not that the, the, the container wherein you just put something and you'll get the finished product out. No, it cannot way that way so it offers us uh, innovative products services business models and concepts 
with design thinking, you can use the obstacles in your path to create something new. Learn to think out of box and still move straight to your goal. So design thinking lets you answer that the questions your customer never thought they would have. And later your customer will say, this is exactly the solution I was waiting, always waiting for. So if I come out with the list, of things what are provided like the incubator so what we have now just discussed now the infant incubator the, the people were not knowing how their problem would be solved but they had a lot of pains in their mind that how we should really survive uh, and uh, we cannot even offer um, to, to pay 25000 dollars us dollars to get uh, the incubator but they made it simple and it is available to everybody. And the customer would say, as it is rightly pointed out here, this is exactly the solution I was always you know, waiting for. So this is the kind of reaction we should get at the end when we apply the design thinking principles to solve the problems. So what is design thinking in that case? Design thinking is simplicity in complexity. It is a people-focused method to solve ill-defined societal problems through innovative solutions. See, see how, how it will happen, I tell you. If I go to a person and ask, what is your problem? He is so much confused, like the picture clearly shows in the left brain. There is no clarity. There is no clarity for the person about the problem or the pains he has. So that is why we normally go in for empathy mapping. Empathy mapping, we would capture the immediate reaction. We will try to capture the emotional, uh, you know, feelings. Okay, and then arrive at a meaningful, the co-generated social challenge to solve one. Correct. So that means it is. That's why it is I said simplicity in complexity, and it is a people focused. Correct. Let us go through this in, in detail and slowly what exactly the design thinking is all about. First of all, it is a human centered problem solving tool. Let us try to understand when I say human centered, human centered means keeping the user at the center. I'm going to collect or work or conduct my study and understand the pain points and the gains of the person empathetically okay which would work in a collaborative manner and it is going to be co-created and involving all the stakeholders right it is feasible and viable that's why i said three circle always we should keep those three circles in our mind that one is the desirability. So human-centered problem solving tool is talking about the desirability, right? And the, the, the other part is when I'm trying to apply my solution, it should be feasible at the same time, it should be viable. So this is the basic understanding of our design thinking. And it strongly believes that the people who face the problems are the one who hold the key to their problems answer, correct? So ultimately, the key to the process is empathizing. I told you that the two elements which are very crucial in this entire journey is one is the power of curiosity, another one is empathy. So when I empathize, I'm going to uncover the unmet needs by understanding their beliefs, values, motivations, behavior, pains, gains, and challenges. See, when I'm talking to people, even I should give respect it due respect to their belief system i cannot go away with it go against it, it and the values the motivations behavior and then provide them innovative solution that's the power of actually the design thinking right so the outcome all the time need not be a product i told you that that, that need not be a product it can be a process or a service or more significantly an experience which is not just at the level of company customer interface, but also for the entire business ecosystem. I'll tell you, see today, today the people 
would love to go to the cafe coffee day to have a cup of coffee coffee which is costing them 125 rupees whereas the same coffee is available at the other places a good place for 25 rupees or 30 rupees why this difference the difference is that that particular shop is providing you a different you know experience that's the power of user centric approach that's the power of human centered design approach <clears throat> today the department stores like reliance the more right they are selling vegetables the same vegetables outside may be available for some half the rate what they are selling at but still people love to go to get that experience so they are providing them or making them to go with the dignity go with that passion go with the, the, the style in which they can go and pick up the things and, and experience it that the uh, experience make them to pay more so that is the way how they are really understanding the requirements of the user that's the power of the design thinking so in today's marketplace customers are shifting from passive consumption to active participation understand this, this is really uh, nicely said that shifting from passive consumption passive consumption is we just go buy and come back it's not so we are we want to actively involve in the process of buying the process of you know really uh, experiencing certain things so this difference is really a key to a successful journey of design thinking right so they seek very genuine experiences and they are ready to pay anything risk anything to seek that involvement that's the power so this is what is the thing which we should make it very clear to the, the students who are coming into this course that how this is going to bring in change in the overall perception of the students towards the uh, solving the problems which as an engineer is the basic duty to do right so if i come back to the, the, the discussion on the design thinking it, it has got two elements so one is the basic mindset with which the, the, the students need to go or the person uh, who would go for capturing the opportunities and another one is the various stages which uh, we need to look into so when i come to the mindset mindset there are certain things because see now i'll tell you at this point of time the many people have come out with many models the one which i am discussing here with you all is the stanford uh, design thinking model which has got uh, five elements in that like this idea idea has got its own uh, model there are certain uh, innovation uh, centers they have a different model to work on so but ultimately the basic understanding is that the the uh, objective is here that empathy is the beginning part of it and start with the co-generation and at the end you go with the co-created solutions so so the, when I'm, I'm trying to look at the mindset of the person who is going to now see the things happening around them it is the empathy which we start with right so then second one is the show don't tell that means you, you have to get involved into the, the work don't you know go on theoretically explaining the things get into the uh, you know actual uh, activities and show what is possible and be ready for experiments see why it is experiments one thing is very sure that when i'm really dealing with uh, kind of a, a product design or the service design or the uh, solving the problems of the people here the important thing is if you are not going in the right direction you should fail early early failure is not a crime in this process it is really uh, the best thing what can happen right if you fail early then you can really correct apply correction at the early stage and go further and then mindfulness paying attention to clarity don't miss any clarity that's why i said when i'm conducting my initial study 
with empathy i should go with the open mind i said no like a child i should be able to answer uh, sorry uh, ask the questions without uh, attaching my understanding to it All right and then i should be able to collaborate without which i'll not be able to complete my journey and it should be action oriented to to come out with the solution okay then then how exactly the design thinking uh, take me into so i will start my journey with empathy that is understanding the user needs right and i go in for getting the clarity about the problem i am i have observed see now this is one thing which uh, the beauty of uh, design thinking i would say see supposing if i am working on the uh, problems of the senior citizens in airport how how do i define my problem i would say problems of uh, senior citizens uh, or uh, wastage of time or so instead of talking in a negative form actually design thinking really addresses or helps or orients to develop a positive statements which would rather talk about my intention of, towards that particular problem or the challenge so there i can say how to enhance or how to improve the or how to improve the uh, experience of the senior citizens in in uh, airport yeah, yeah so before you know proceed i just wanted that we'll take a you know pause for 5 10 minutes and uh, if there are any clarification the part participants are looking for we can really uh, talk and then proceed further any specific uh, doubts maybe you can put it in the chat box or if not we'll keep everything at the end if uh, no else okay okay let us continue in that case see now so anyway uh, on 30th i am going to deal with these phases in detail yes sir because we are going to look at the uh, design thinking from the workshop angle ha huh. but what i would suggest is for the students we should really conduct that workshop in the beginning itself then take them through the various models so that they can uh, they'll appreciate uh, and understand the concepts more clearly okay so when when uh, on 30th we will definitely go through these phases in detail but today let us understand what would happen with all these uh, you know uh, phases when we use design thinking as a approach or a tool to address the uh, social challenges or the design challenges see empathetically i am i am going to understand their needs when i say empathy it is like see uh, example i can quote one more example that the, the person is uh, suffering with arthritis so to understand the pain points i can only ask uh, the person how is the pain the person would say very severe where is that they may even show the point at one uh, on the particular area where the pain is but still i am not able to understand uh, the pains of the person so if at all i want to understand i may have to really stay with the person for uh, sometimes and observe how his routine is really affected because of the kind of illness that the person is having then only i can empathetically get connected otherwise sympathy would be working and when sympathy is working you cannot give actual solution so just to understand this and supposing you go to doctor and tell him that uh, i have a severe back pain doctor would go with symptoms i would say that as a sympathy a sympathy working there not the empathy because they are giving based on the 
the uh, basic symptoms what has been explained by the uh, patient so if you empathetically look at the things the approach would be different if you look sympathetically towards the challenges your approach would be different right for example your, your uh, maid servant would you, you, have you ever tried to look at her and then understand the, the uh, normally the maid servants are little uh, middle aged and then they'll carry a lot of pain on their face because always the story would be anyway this is what we are going to discuss in detail on the 30th but when when we look at her she will have a lot of pains in her eyes because it has been a standard or a normal story with all the maid servants that her husband would be drinking every day consuming alcohol making lot of uh, problems at home and she has got three children one is uh, not educated another one is not attending their duties properly and she is the only earning member she, all this the story goes like this and if your your symp sympathy is on her what you do you give her some old clothes to you know wear or you would share some of the leftover food with her and on daily basis and uh, you would definitely provide her some some bonus on uh, certain uh, fixed timings in a year so you are ad addressing her need but it doesn't solve her need, uh, problem to solve her problem you should really go empathetically into her world to understand the pain points and it was done with one of the student groups right what they did i'll definitely discuss with you in detail because we need to really look at now the problems when we are discussing in detail how these problems are addressed we have to look it from two angles one is if it is a layman angle how it would get solved if we now preparing our soldier team students how they would solve that right that difference we need to understand very clearly so that will happen in, in the empathy phase and then comes to the define phase i try to get the more clarity there are specific tools to define uh, that's what we call as the pov statement i'm going to get the clarity about uh, the uh, problem i have identified and define it in a positive with a positive note saying that how might we or how we enhance how we create right and then comes ideate wherein i would be generating lot of ideas correct some multiple ideas uh, i will be generating and then i go to prototype to realize the idea that has been uh, you know uh, designed or defined and then go for testing and implement because while testing i should again go back to the user see this entire cycle we are keeping the user at the center remember my journey starts with the user and ends with the user so i am going to understand the needs of the user and then provide the solution to the user and test it and then collect their feedback and if any improvements are required i will go through it and then and then give it back to them so th th these are the few steps which we would be going through in, in the process of a design thinking and now let us answer few questions to get the more clarity about uh, what design thinking is on see why do we need design thinking they already we discussed to, for our survival for our survival wherein we need to bring in change right the design thinking is essential so it can be it can be for the companies to innovate correct to innovate they have to adopt design thing why because user need say for example one of the company where i am now right now sitting next to my cabin i have a startup so on what you know user experience in a particular you know automobile showroom what they are doing you know they are trying to capture the behavior of the people when they enter the showroom for inquiry or buying the vehicles correct so they are categorizing the people into many you know segments one is when a person comes alone how does his buying power would be okay when he comes with his friends how does it work when he comes with his family how does it work when only the family you know uh, friends uh, who would 
youngsters, how their behavior would be, how their decision making ability would be, right? So all this, you know, they are capturing it. And accordingly, accordingly, they are going to understand the requirements. When a, when a person goes with the family, 99% he would take the decision to buy it. But they would be more focusing on their economic aspects. So can I have a stall in, in my showroom to address their economic needs? There is a banker who is sitting, who would come to their rescue and then say, sir, if you need the financial support, I'm going to give you. No collateral is required. This is the minimum uh, interest what we can you have to pay. This is this, 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 this. And his uh, requirement is met. And he may turn out to be a potential customer for that showroom. And that's exactly the companies need to work. It is not meant only for the business centers, NGOs, the government hospitals, the uh, other sectors, everywhere, every platform, this innovation is required. And design thinking is the only answer for that. Correct? Because today's consumers are very aware. I'll tell you, they are aware, very aware and spoiled for choice. See, they have multiple choice. They are equipped with multiple uh, choices. So you have to carefully handle them and see that they stick to your product or a service what you are providing. And they are very fickle minded. So they, they don't mind changing their mind because or opinion or the choice because they have multiple opportunities. Scope is wide. So this is the first requirement for the companies to innovate is uh, the first one. And second one is for society to solve human problems. We need design thinking. So I discussed many you know, uh, projects with you all. There are plenty of projects like this, wherein design thinking is really helping us. Say for example, we are working on a garbage issue. So if we all now sit and try to evolve a solution for garbage issue, that is the people reluctantly throwing the waste collected in their house at a corner of the society. Is it not the uh, really troublesome uh, issue? Yes. What is the solution for this? If without looking into design thinking, I just go in for discussion, most of us would say that it is we need to create awareness. Our people do not have any awareness about this. They, their civic sense is really dead. They do not know how to show their responsibility towards the society. All this. Okay. I do it. I create awareness. What I do, awareness in the sense, I make a pamphlet. I make a nice video out of it. I circulate it and then go to every house, tell them that don't do it. Okay. If I apply design thinking, how does it change? How my approach would get changed? So there I am first of all trying to understand the pain points of the people who are part of it. Point number one. Who are the people? First one. The people who are really responsible for, you know, throwing the, the, the waste onto the open space. Okay. When I deeply study the situation, I understand that there are in that locality, majority of them are senior citizens who are having certain ailments, the diseases, who are unable to get up early in the morning to share the waste collected from their house to the municipal corporation vehicle, which would be coming on regular basis to collect. So their sleeping pattern is so bad that because of the tablets or the medicine they take, they will not be able to get up early in the morning. They would normally get up after the vehicle is gone. So naturally, what they do? They just collect everything and then dump it at one particular place and go. So this is actually the reason for that. It is not that awareness would bring back the situation to normal. This is one, one, one story of one of the stakeholders. There may be multiple stories available for you when you look at it empathetically. 
the patience i should have i should not come to conclusion just because you know i saw some see something and then jump to conclusion and say that this is a problem with our locality this is a problem with our society this is a problem with our people no design thinking would be a powerful tool which can really address it uh, using a system thinking right say for example overcrowding at a train stations so it is normally seen and we say that people do not have the civic sense, they behave this way, that way. But what is the reason behind it? Bad online banking experiences, correct traffic jams, all this, which can lead to frustration and social challenges. So again, the second reason why we should have, why we need design thinking is for society to solve human problems. And third one is for individuals to compete. Yes. I would like to grow. Who is here on this platform who, you know, may not want to grow? Yes, everybody wants to grow. Everybody is ambitious. Everybody would see, wants to see themselves at a very high position with a high level of income. But do I have that capability to get into it? That is very important. Correct. Design thinking would definitely help me to arrive at it empathetically try to understand your own pain points it's possible i'll tell you it is possible so to compete individually you can definitely apply design thinking principles and then uh, use the technology to overcome your weaknesses right so three reasons one is for companies to innovate for society to solve the human problems or for individuals to compete so maybe we can take a minute uh, pause here and try to answer these questions after listening to the basic understanding about design thinking what are the key innovations that inspired you or inspire you right and what are some human problems that you face every day or third one what will design thinking help you compete in so these are the three questions which we can really try to answer you believe it or not Whenever I, I take up some new things, we should really take pause in between to answer what the learning that has happened and connect it to my thinking process and then understand it and put it onto the, you know, my design passbook and then continue. Okay, this is one small activity which you all can maybe uh, work on it and then when we meet on Wednesday, you can definitely share it. So to, to continue our discussion, what makes this design thinking a unique way of thinking? Correct. So it's always believed that the left brain controls more logical, analytical functions, and right hemisphere processes the imagination, creativity, and emotion. So design thinking probably only you know tool uh, or with a few disciplines which utilize both equally right and left so how this makes daily a difference let us you know can look into it by understanding certain characteristics of design thinking which defines one this is used by anyone anyone can use design thinking it is not pertaining or the, the uh, property of a few people who are having certain set of skill set no no it is it can be used by anybody who, because initially I said all of us are designers. We have that capability. Only thing is we need to unmask it. How we can unmask? Developing two good qualities. One is curiosity, another one is the empathy. So if I develop those two qualities in me or activate, I would say not develop, activate, activate. They are there with us, but we have not activated them. We need to activate. So uh, the, then the and, uh, second one is it's fun, you believe it or not, when, when I'm really talking to the people to understand their basic uh, uh, pain points, it's a fun. And it involves method that enables empathy with people, yes. It seeks to define the problem as actively as finding the solution. Both are, you know, really uh, interesting. And it ideates and explores solution. Ideates, when I say, it is really helping us to get multiple solutions and explore or help us to get the 
a unique uh, solution for that and then it's collaborative in nature and very unique uh, thing that happens with the uh, design thinking approach is, is iterative in process till i get a very impactful solution i go on iterating this um, cycle that i complete come back check and then again move on and it solves the problems of from of many different types it's not pertaining to only one it it can be from the governance it can be connected to healthcare it can be connected to education it can be connected to well being it can be connected to the agriculture so on you name any field the design thinking can be applied or i would say any opportunities or any challenges the design team can be applied so come back to the, the, no, the, no, 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 the comparison or the way how design thinking really uses both the hemispheres equally okay so what will happen one side i have certain parameters which the the right uh, left brain would work and uh, other side i have a right brain in between uh, how this design thinking really addresses or use both see one of the, the thing which is really important out of all that is the focus on analysis and deal with the problems kind of problems right and then analyze and decide and let's how, what type of problems what is the mindset with which we start let us go reverse see in case of business thinking we say let us solve this problem that means you have a clarity about the problem correct you know this is the requirement but here there is no problem at all in creative thinking so the design thinking approach it says that what is the problem we are trying to solve we are when i say what is the problem that means i need to now understand correct so in business thinking it is depending more on the past but design thinking is more on the present to create future understand this so we are in, in working on the present to create future similarly when you talk about the uh, business thinking it deals with the well defined problems creative thinking it is deal with undefined problems so ultimately we are working on ill defined problems ill defined co generated problems this is how it becomes a unique way of thinking unique way of thinking this is really a good slide to make us to understand and you believe it or not when i really take it to the students i need to generate lot of examples only through examples the students can understand what this is all about correct so since they are at the first year level we can we can really understand the concepts at little higher level but when we really take it to the students we need to fragment them into very simple terms simple you know conceptual uh, forms and then take it to them so that they understand uh, and enjoy the process okay so one more you know continuing that activity here can we complete this list can you think of problem that occur in society like example overcrowding on buses young couple unable to afford houses like this can i get or continue this list with the kind of problems based on my own experience my own exposure my own belief system i can do that or business and services bad online experience buying movie tickets so is there any some, something you know which has really happened to you and or or you know some of the problems which can be addressed or process and operations backlog issues unable to tackle an issue efficiently or situations when haze arrives when customer complains many many possibilities so so based on why we need design thinking in all those aspects can i develop a list of problems which can be otherwise called challenges it can be addressed using design thinking principles then as a part of this module in fact there is the focus is given on prototype and mvp mvp is nothing but it is the you know i'll show you minimum viable product so 
we will discuss on this. This is the last part of our, of our discussion. So it may take another 15 minutes to go. Then we will close with the question answer session. So what is exactly the prototype? Why it, it really you know, finds its importance in the design thinking process? See, it's a simple experimental model. Why it is essential? Say, for example, let us go to some examples it's for and then come back. See, I have a few things. Three examples I have taken who have failed in India, Indian market. One example I have taken is from Milano. Another one is a Bicky car. Another one is a Bisleri Pop. See, Bisleri Pop, at least, I, I never came across that when it entered the Indian market and when it was vanished. It is a made by Bisleri company who are into making the uh, packaged drinking water right mineral water they entered into the market uh, with uh, the uh, kind of uh, product range uh, into lime and coke and orange flavored uh, soda but they could not succeed they moved out of the market bt cars they could sell only 500 in India. Further, they could not sell. They moved out of India. Nano car is a big failure. Correct. Then why it, it happened? My, my question here is, how it is connected to our discussion is, see, the kind of investment the people have made, the companies have made, right, in bringing these products to the consumer. No doubt, they have understood the requirements of the customer based on their past experience, right? They, they, they arrived at certain things and invested, prepared, manufactured, everything was done, but could not sustain. So you can understand the kind of loss the company would have incurred, the kind of uh, the expenses which uh, they, they have really uh, foregone in, in meeting the, the product expectations is really huge. Like this, I have plenty of examples. Even you get, if you just uh, keep yourself attached to, constantly attached to some of the good magazines like Forbes, uh, HBR, Harvard Business Review, all these are now available on like our entrepreneurship uh, you know, magazine. So you get hundreds of examples like this. And there are certain websites like Better India, right? So Better India is one of the best uh, you know, website uh, wherein you, your students, everybody can log on on a day-to-day -day basis and get registered to the website. Every day morning when you get up in your mailbox, you will have the, the, one of the best uh, innovation that has happened in the space of uh, uh, social uh, education, other sectors. You can really look at it and then uh, you will uh, get to know what is happening around us. So why I'm, I'm giving you this example is this. So we can, we can come back to us. If we get into the process of prototyping, what will happen? So before I release my product, I can really make the prototype ready and look for the functionalities and show it to my you know, user and get their opinion and look at it from many angles. How does it function? And then approve it and then validate and then take it forward. This ultimately, it is the process of validation, validation of the ideas, process of validation of the assumptions I made. Correct? So further refinements are possible to, to make, once I really understand the product, uh, you know, how best it is meeting the requirements, correct? So early uh, research isn't everything. In the sense, somebody may ask, you need to check everything, sir. Don't worry, it will work. That's a just gut feeling. But by the time I make the product, there may be possibility that the time taken to develop the product is so huge that the uh, customer is no more in the position to accept it. It has lost its you know, value. So there may be possibility that I'm looking for little different taste and what you have developed is different, so I don't use it. See, that's how it, it actually happens. So prototyping is essential. It's a very important part of our entire process. And I should be able to do it in early stage of product development. Once the solution is ready, I should be able to immediately get into the prototype. So in case of the design thinking uh, principles and the kind of the problem statement we have seen initially, there I need not have to ha have all the time which is made uh, with the tangible uh, items uh, uh, like a material and all. Here I can definitely go for 
a paper model i can go for the wire mesh or i can go for the story board there are many possibilities okay so it is essential ultimately with prototyping i'm going to learn to experiment and that it is better to fail early and often remember that more the number of times i fail better the solution would be right so so we are going to make our you know ideas tangible and i can have a physical prototypes like one what has been shown here like uh, designing of the mouse i can have a 3d printing get that uh, mouse being uh, designed and then made i can check for its uh, operations and then go for it Correct. i can have wire meshes wire frames sorry wire frames right so uh, wherein this one example is about the mobile uh, mobile interaction during using the paper uh, wire frames i can make it uh, you know drawn on the paper, piece of paper and then understand or i can develop a storyboard with proper connection and then subject it for verification validation by the users by the stakeholders then take it for implementation that's the beauty of this but at the same time right i have one more new concept being developed that is minimum viable prop what is this what is this it is breaking down or releasing your product in a in a with with the fewer features initially to understand again it is reducing the risk associated with the product developer or the service designer correct if i break down the term minimum viable product what exactly the meaning i draw minimum is just basic necessary features viable these basic features must must fulfill or help you understand the needs of the user yes product something that enables user to share their feedback for further development what is that see this in a diagram what it says the circle left circle it says the products nobody wants to use that means very bad product that is the understanding they have so not is uh, useful but the other side products built by companies better financed than you right so the intersection of these two somewhere the balance between these two will help us to release a product with minimum features correct for example we can take the examples linkedin all of us are familiar with this platform right it is now one of the best social media platform for business connectivity correct but when it was appeared in 2003 it was not with the same set of features what we have now they released their mvp model minimum viable product model which allowed user profile searching for people and connecting to other users in the network that's all right so they did not go beyond that but the over the period of time when this understanding was done minimum viable product just basic necessary features and these features must fulfill to help you to understand the user needs what they really look for and then the improvement of the product so when this was applied you can understand where this linkedin is today do you think that they never had this in their mind to introduce with all the features in the beginning yes but the risk could have been very high correct this mvp understanding definitely is good for the organizations or the service providers to introduce you know mvp model initially and then go further oh, very good examples we have this is about the uber cab right when they introduced appeared in 2008 their mvp model had only connected cab drivers to iphone app right and uh, sms was available so with the limited features they introduced their app and then for that developed it you, you know where this uber cab is now worldwide spotify the same story here it's one of the best platform for uh, songs and other things so in 2006 they developed an mvp to test that idea among family and friends right the private minimum viable product case study revealed significant interest in music streaming approach today you can understand where it is 
So like this, there are plenty of examples available. So this is one of the best approach when we go for minimum viable product and you know prototyping, which is quite essential and useful. Okay, so uh, this really you know uh, helps us to come to our discussion. But uh, I think we need to recapture and understand what exactly we discussed today. See, before starting this particular course to the students, we need to orient them. Orient towards what? Orient towards what is happening around us. Orient them towards the engineering in society, engineers in society. They should really feel proud for having taken engineering as their profession. Correct. So if they get that feeling that I'm, 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 I have a significant role to play, then naturally whatever knowledge that has been given to them would go with the, the required, or, you know, uh, fulfill the required uh, objective. And, and once that is done, we need to really connect them to the social, uh, sorry, innovations that are happening around us. Right. And the kind of design mindset they need to develop. Then take them through the various projects that are happening uh, in a way under various uh, segments like uh, it can be under medical, it can be under the uh, governance, it can be under education. So we can definitely expose them to the various uh, projects that are happening uh, and then prepare them to get into the design thinking process. Right. So once that base is created, the orientation is done, then uh, we can really make them to get into it by selecting a small project and work and then reflect back. But one thing is very sure, we have to create a lot of opportunity for the students to reflect back very now, now and then. So uh, if your class, if it is designed for one hour, I would suggest we should really design for more than one hour. Each class should be at least 90 minutes so that we'll get a good amount of time to get their reflections, capture their reflections, right? And uh, check to what extent the realization has happened. So this is what I wanted to share today.